I am Michael Sullivan. I'm the CEO of Life Model Works, and I am back doing Wilder Chats with Kitty Wilder. Hi, Kitty. How are you? Hi, Michael. I'm doing well, thanks. Great. Well, we are going to go back into handling the six big emotions. This is such an important feature of the Life Model. Uh, we have these six big emotions that we're hardwired for, and they disrupt our relational flow and they okay. disrupt our peace and our joy. And we all experience this. There's no way to stop it from happening when situations arise. But yeah. what we can do is learn skills of how to return quickly back into that flow of peace and joy that we need to so that these we don't get stuck in these big emotions. And so uh, you're going to tell some uh, stories. We're going to kind of do some training here like we were in a training session right these six emotions and then you're gonna you're gonna talk about um the different levels of the brain and how we process these emotions in these different levels the third level and the fourth level yes. so we're gonna start with the third level and then we'll come back and do some further chats uh about the fourth level so yes so we're gonna talk about fear to begin with all right so kitty train me here we go <laughs> okay, well, and with each one of these, what's important to remember that returning to joy is somewhat confusing. And so people will think that returning to joy means that I have left the negative emotion and now I'm back to happy skippy. But we are in the midst of the emotion and we have found someone we're glad to be with. Yes. And a healthy brain can do that in 90 seconds. Wow. So we're going to work first on the level three, which is the synchronizing the singular cortex and so we're returning to joy so each story will have somebody that i'm glad to be with so we want to prepare our story so in the preparation the story has a moderate feeling level it's not too intense <clears throat> excuse me because the brain doesn't really care if it's intense or not it'll still have the skill even if it's a moderate story Right. But for training purposes, we want to be able to do it in a moderate level because otherwise we're going to over, um, you know, stress you with a really intense story. So yes. we want to keep it at moderate when we're training. Yeah. But in real life, we may have real intense ones. And in training, we want to be able to have told the story before so that it's we've had some practice. We've processed it. I do not need to be guarded in telling this story. If there's somebody around that we don't want them to hear the story or whatever, then the story just doesn't become authentic because we're uh, a little cautious and we're not really getting into the story. And the story has to be autobiographical. It's about me. I'm not telling your story. I'm telling my story. And this story illustrates a specific feeling. So those are the preparation things. And then we want to briefly describe the situation we list feeling words for this story. And then during this story, my body felt. And so how was I able to return to joy in the midst of the distressing emotion? So I'll tell a story now, and then we will have a checklist to make sure that I covered everything adequately. Okay. So my fear story is I'm going to tell about a time when I was in California during an earthquake. And I was at work, and at that time I worked at a church, and the church was built on rollers. And so when it... Um, oh, Kitty, I forgot to record. <laughs> oh, it says recording up in the corner. Oh, it does. Okay, I must have hit it. We can edit this out. Don't worry, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Okay, so you'll edit this out? Yeah. Okay. Okay, my, my feeling of uh, fear story is about an earthquake in Pasadena, California, when we were there. And I was working at a church and the church had been built on rollers so it could just kind of roll with the earthquake. And I had gone in early, I was about 7.30 in the morning and I was busy working and all of a sudden the, the whole building started moving like this and it freaked me out. My natural instinct was to just bolt and run. You're not supposed to do that, but I just flew like lightning out the building. And I you know, got out there and I was just kind of breathing heavy. I was terrified. I'd never been in an earthquake before and I didn't know really what all this was, but I recognized that something, I didn't want to be in the building when everything would fall down. 
And so I had not gotten under a desk, which you're supposed to, or in a doorway, which they say is advisable, but not always agree with that. But I was just, I was just breathing heavy. My, you know, my adrenaline was just going crazy. And when I got out to the um, parking lot, everyone else in the church, the custodians and different ones had gathered out there. And I was so glad to be with them. I was just so thrilled to be out of that building. And then the custodian was like, oh my, I've never seen you move so fast. And I was like, yes, I was out of there. But in the midst of that, I was so glad to be with them, but I had not calmed down yet. But I had returned to joy in that I was glad to be with these other people here that had escaped also. So did I show authentic emotion on my face and in my voice? Absolutely. Uh, I, was, I felt like I was there with you, you know, going through the experience. Yeah. And did I maintain co eye contact when I was telling the story? Yes, you did. Um, did I use enough feeling words for my emotions? Yes. You, you elaborated on several of the mo emotions you were going through. Mm -hmm. Okay. And did I use feeling words for my body sensations? Absolutely. Okay. And I told the story like I was involved. Oh yeah. <laughs> and I, I don't used think you the could have faked that one. <laughs> <laughs> and I used the right amount of words, not too many and not too few. Yes, it was very succinct, you know, easy to engage with, easy to follow. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because the story we can give a whole bunch of details, but we lose the person. So in training and in telling our stories, the more concise and conveying the emotion is the best way to be able to do it. So we like to be able to get our stories down to a minute and a half. Yeah. Because we don't need all the other peripheral details to really convey the emotion. So, so tell me just real quickly then about, okay, I hear this story from you and this is, this is helping you uh, with your brain processing emotions, right? And, and it, but it helps me as well. T tell me a little bit about how internalizing this story from you helps me. Okay, as I, we call them four plus stories because we're including the four levels of the right brain. And then the plus means that when we've included all those, then we get the benefit of the words on the left side of the brain. So as we do that, then you're getting a visual picture you can almost imagine what I looked like, what the, the environment was like. And so that puts a little video clip in your brain. Yeah. So now you, when you think of fear, you may have like how my mother handled it, how my father handled it, how my siblings, but now you have how Kitty handled this fear in your brain too. Mm -hmm. So you have a resource of, I can handle it this way. Because yeah. sometimes we think, I don't want to ever handle this emotion like how my dad handled it or how my mom handled it. And so we need a variety of how other people handled it. So we have a, more resources on what it's like us to do, how to handle these. Yeah, because I might not have a dad and mom nearby to help me with the curriculum of right. returning to joy. But I have Kitty. And right. we've, we have fellowship with each other. and so part of our fellowship is telling our stories to each other. We actually practice storytelling as a part of our curriculum as Christians to build one another up and help equip each other to right. be, to learn how to return to joy. Right. And it's part of our maturity by learning these because we need to have learned these in the first two years of life. And if we didn't, then we need to do catch up now in learning how to do this with other people. Yeah, so we're going back into into areas of our lives where we have holes, we sometimes say, mm -hmm. in our maturity, yeah. and the storytelling is a way to fill those holes. Right. Very mm -hmm. good. So, all right, this is great. So this is the, the chat on returning to joy from fear, and we're going to move on to another chat in our next chat, and we're going to talk about shame and how to return yes. to joy from shame. Yes.